It's 9.34 on Monday's News Talk Breakfast, the 25th of November. You're here with Ivan Yates and myself, Chris Donoghue. Now, I suppose the topic of women's dress sizes regularly comes up for debate, but the latest wave of debate has been started with uh, the franchise Debenhams introducing 16 or size 16 mannequins as standard and then the reaction for and against this by different groups. And one of the people who got the most reaction was the Irish designer Paul Costello, who uh, called into question the attitude of big bigger mannequin saying whether or not it was making being unhealthy acceptable. He joined George on the right hook last week. Mannequins size 16, it's, it's, it's patronising to women. I think it's, it's not the way to, to promote large and, and, and being healthy. I, I think there are the, the more discreet ways of doing that. I just think it, it's totally um, out, of, out of order. All right, that was Paul Costello speaking on News Talk last week. Well, the issue of model size and shape and the reality of models versus reality uh, has long since been debated. But one person who understands the industry and also has been writing about this and other issues around the industry is Louise O'Reilly, a model and operator of the Style Me Curvy blog. And Louise is in studio with us this morning. How are you, Louise? Good to see you. I'm good, Chris. Thanks. Um, first of all, on uh, size 16 mannequins, um, the average woman is what size 14 to 16 so having a mannequin in store this was what Debenham says that reflects how the clothing will look on you is what we're doing yeah absolutely I mean it's all about promoting diversity in fashion Um, Debenhams weren't only the first people to do this H&M have been operating the same method since last year in the lingerie departments and it's been extremely successful so you you're a model. I am indeed. Before when when we were talking about this item you were described and would you describe yourself as a plus size model? I would um the we I'm a size 16 and I work in the industry as a plus size model and just to explain it to your listeners the term plus size is terminology defined by the fashion industry. Yeah. And if you're a plus size model you're anything above a size 12 and that's how it works and sometimes it can be misperceived. Absolutely and that's where I was going to get to because when you walked in the door here today I would say you're on the the small size of average and you know plus size has this opinion of of larger women you're you're tiny so what? Yeah I I read the brief on this and I was expecting two ton Tessie to arrive in and then the slim model comes in. (laughs) No but you, you are extremely slim and if you say am I the average woman I would have thought no you're below average. But see that's the thing and I think as well an awful lot of people when they heard size 16 uh, mannequins they didn't really know what to expect but even when you look at the Debenhams mannequins itself they're toned they're fit Mm -hmm. and as a plus size model and regardless of that working in the industry and um, writing about it the average woman is a size 14 to 16. Um, I go to the gym three times a week. I eat really healthily. I have a BMI of something like 19 or 20, which is perfect for everyday standards. So I don't think people should be jumping to the c- conclusion about bigger women. But Louise, this is the thing, because you, you seem extremely comfortable uh, talking about this and all the issues we're talking about. But the pressure that's on perhaps a younger woman or perhaps all women to, to get down to, to smaller when and that that's where you start entering into unhealthy yeah, rather absolutely. than being fit, healthy and happy. Yeah, I mean, personally, if it was me, I would love to see a variation of sizes in Debenham stores and across all big chain stores, not just a size 8 or 16, but to have a size 12, 14, 16, and whatever, to promote the fact that everybody is made differently. Do you find, though, I'm working in the industry, do you find that designers are aware, because you can do something, uh, you can design something that looks absolutely beautiful for, for guys or girls, and then as it starts to get bigger into larger sizes, it doesn't look the same. Do you find there's an awareness with designers to actually design something that looks good at size 16 or 18 or 20 or whatever it is? Absolutely. I mean, it's a very difficult thing and it's something that myself personally and a few other people are really trying to change. Um, You have people like 
All Walks Catwalk, which has been set up by um, supermodel Erin O'Connor and Karen Franklin. And they've been really trying to push with designers to utilise bigger clothing um, and not just stopping their designs at a size 14, incorporating 16s, 18s and upwards, but also to introduce curvier women on the catwalks and promote a healthier body image. Mm -hmm. Who who runs or who drives or controls fashion and all that? Is it women or men? Who, who controls it? Because there are so many industries that are controlled by men. Yeah. But I, I, is this industry, I'm, I'm trying to get to where does the pressure on women come from? The pressure on women does come from the catwalks. I'm just going to be perfectly honest. And I mean, it, that starts then from the grassroots level of the designer. And they produce sample sizes. That would be what we have known as an American size two, um, a European size six. And it's very, very difficult because every every time around Fashion Week, whether it's September or February, I am in on dated with emails from my readers, um, just with issues and feeling very insecure about themselves because of what they see on the catwalks. They're all very, very skinny. Similarly, recently we saw the Victoria's Secret uh, fashion show, which is known nowadays as the most popular fashion show on earth. And immediately you're just bombarded with these, I suppose, goddess-like characters and the media is then stimulating to other girls that this is what you should look like. This is the ideal body type mm-hmm. and it's, it's not right. The, one of the points that um, Paul Cusso probably got a bit bashed but when he was de- describing his points a bit why did he, was he so objecting to size 16 mannequins? One of the points that he was making was it normalises an unhealthy uh, picture. Now, one of the things that you have made is that size 16 actually can be size 16 toned going to the gym. That's just the size. That's just the frame I'm on. So but his concern was that it's OK to, to get up to size 16 by being unhealthy. He was afraid that you are b- putting alongside normal being unhealthy. W- what's your reply to that? No, I just I can I can definitely see Paul's point. Um, But honestly, working in the industry as long as I have now for four and a half years, um, I work alongside incredible um, international plus size models of all different shapes and sizes. Um, And I've seen women of all different shapes and sizes. And I you just you can't put it in that category it's it's not going in the direction that he's claiming. Do you know what I mean? Who who do you talk to about changing the the term plus size model? Because it is the one thing that's staggered me today. Because as I say, if if I saw you in the street or someone said to me, uh, describe Louise O'Reilly, you would say you know fit, healthy, young, pretty, not plus size. Plus size would never come to mind. So who who comes up with that and how does that change? That that's a the million dollar question, Chris. Um, it's very very tough, and what basically it's down to media. That's that's what we need. Um, we need people to be utilising us as models, as just curvy women. And um, this is something my own modelling agent Rebecca Morgan really pushes. Um, she pushes me like a normal model. Um, she's given me the confidence to work internationally. Um, it's just one of those things that. You see magazines nowadays, for example, Stellar magazine used me in two editorials. Karina Gaffey actually put me in a um, a jewellery shoot, but without mentioning the fact that I was plus size. Mm -hmm. And this is what people need to see. They need to see um, a bigger girl, a curvier girl in it, but not an issue being made of it. Okay, fair point. Instead of a feature, just become normal. Uh, Louise O'Reilly, thank you very much. Plus size model and operator of the Style Me Curvy is the name of Louise's blog. We referenced that a couple of times. Thanks for coming in to us. Thank you so much.